But again, got another Cyberpunk 2077 uh, performance video for you. Now, uh, I'm on an RTX 2060, just a stock standard one, not a super. You might have watched my previous video where I was messing around with settings and showing you uh, what I'm using to get what I'd consider quality versus performance. Uh, but I still wasn't happy with the frame rate, so I kept messing around with a few things. And I've actually come up with a way to get this game running at over 60 frames per second with basically ultra settings. Uh, I looked at some guides, I uh, looked at my own settings and did some experimenting. And one thing that I noticed uh, wasn't mentioned anywhere was a particular setting under here in gameplay called crowd density. I mean, I've been to a lot of the big name gaming sites and a lot of them have mentioned all the graphic settings here and what to turn on and off and what gives you a performance hit. Like a lot of them tell you as well, like the screen space reflections quality here or turn it down to medium or low or off. Same with the ambient occlusion. Now you can see here, I've basically got everything set to ultra except for the film grain, chromatic aberration, depth of field, lens flare and motion blur. They're all off. But if you scroll down, everything is basically maxed out except um, screen space reflections because I haven't got them, I think it's the psycho there. Got that on ultra. But everything else is as high as it can go. Ray tracing off and the CAS is also off and DLSS is still set to quality. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same save game that I did in the past video where I'll load at the base of V's apartment building because there's a good uh, crowd population there. Do the same run through with the settings the way they are now and then I will do a second run through where we'll reload the save game but with the population density set to medium. So on the second run through we're basically going to snap our fingers like Thanos and get rid of half of the population in the game. And again, this is amazing because, like I said, I haven't seen many people point this out. Now, another thing I want to mention also while we load up the game hey, is, well, since the last video, so I've done a complete uninstall and clean out of my NVIDIA drivers. Uh, I use a program called Display Driver Uninstaller. Google DDU, you should be able to find it. Read the manual, uh, it's very important though. And basically complete, completely cleaned out my system of NVIDIA GeForce Experience and I reinstalled the drivers and GeForce experience. Now, as you can see with ultra settings, sitting at 67 frames a second now. We will get the min max up and running. I've got P-Sync off, so we should be able to go over my refresh rate um, for the game. But yeah, sitting at 66, four, we'll do the run around like we did before. There might be some screen tearing because of the V-Sync being off. But I think you'll see, yeah, we're sitting at a solid 50, so just the clean drivers have basically boosted the frames while I'm sitting at ultra. There we go, average of 61, minimum of 50. So we're already seeing an improvement here just from uh, reinstalling drivers, as well as the fact that, yeah, I've got the settings much higher than I had them uh, in the other video, with the shadows and the reflections turned down. Okay, so we'll jump in the car, we'll go for the drive. And as we can see, there's a lot of pedestrians walking around and as before in the car we get a bigger dive in frame rate but everything's still looking good and still running fairly smooth I mean overall frame rate we're doing much much better than uh, we were in the past video so I'm gonna say yes don't just update your GPU drivers it is worth doing a clean install just for this alone, because as we can see, I've definitely got higher settings and getting the same, if not better, frame rates with much better graphic quality. So as we run along here, still getting pretty good frames. Got a max of 68, so almost 70 frames per second, but and an average of 56. And when we go inside the building, we should jump up into the 70s. There we go, just getting out of the car, walking around, back up to the 60s. So driving really does take a hit to the frame rate. And then when you're indoors, hey, how's it going? you can see the frame rate's jumping up into the 70s, up to 85, and our average is climbing. And even with the combat, People still flying like we're crazy. 
And as we can see, I'm getting a solid 60 frames per second while I'm fighting the spawning in cops. Okay, so let's quickly shut off the frame counter because as we've seen on the menu, it's jumped right up. But yeah, you can see we got up into the 80s then, minimum of 40. And that should be turned off, but off oh, because I'm pressing the wrong button. <laughs> yeah. And again, there we go. So we can refresh it. Okay, so we don't want to revive V. What we want to do is we want to go into the settings. Go to gameplay. And we want to, where is it? Crowd density. Turn it to medium. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to exit to the main menu so we can make sure we've reloaded the game. Clear out the memory and stuff like that. And then do the same run through. And I think you're going to be impressed with this. So again, settings. Everything is ultra. Okay, basically. Don't use ray tracing. It's not there yet. Load up the manual save. Hey, and as you saw, we lowered the population to medium. Did you all hear about that Arasaka aircraft carrier docked in Night City? Called Kujira or... Okay, let's load the game load in. Okay, sitting at 69 frames per second. Also, I'm recording, so we're going to lose a couple of frames there. Let's get up a frame counter. Freeze things off. Ultra settings. Now, as you can see, the game hasn't changed that much. There is actually a few less people around, but not a massive amount. There's also... Oops, we don't want to get in there yet. There is also less traffic. But the game is still maxed out in its visuals. So you're getting 80 frames a second looking up at everything. Getting 60 around here easy. Get, jumping up to 70. So look at that, we're getting like 70 frames per second average now. Max of 81 so far. And a minimum of 58. No drops to 30. Or 38. Okay, did the run around. Let's get into the car. And you watch this. Sitting at 67 frames, average 68 in the car, where we were dropping down to as low as 40 before. We're sitting over 60 while we're driving. And honestly, there doesn't seem to be that much of a difference in the traffic and stuff, but the gameplay, identical. I think the game's just as immersive still. But you can see there. Easily sitting on a good solid 60 frames per second. So. Not there. Yeah, I'm going to recommend ignoring all those graphic guides that you're seeing online and these pro gaming um, places because yeah I mean we just basically drove there all the way 65 frames per second we get out sitting at 70 and we're lucky if we drop down to 58 frames uh, hey how's it going and there you have it so yeah uh, remember, I am using that hex mod still, and I do have the slide overclock on the 2060 from the last video. But I'm going to say, yeah, if you um, are having trouble keeping a stable 60 frames per second, that is the biggest performance boost I have got. And as a, yeah, this game is running super smooth. Not dipping below 60, really. And everything's maxed out. And I could probably turn a few more things on and still keep over 60, like those processing effects. And just for the sake of it, let's get in combat. And it's still sitting around at 60 frames a second. Like I said, we are losing a few frames because of uh, the fact that I'm recording this video. So anyway, hope this helps you. Uh, recommend yeah following my settings here 
and put everything to max, turn off the post-processing effects, turn off the ray tracing, and set your population density to medium, and you're going to have a marvellous time performance-wise, even on a low-end RTX card like a 2060. So yeah, I was quite surprised. I mean, it makes sense. The game's got less things to render, but I would have thought the CPU would have handled more like the rendering in of, um, I don't know, the NPCs. But as you can see, yep, massive performance increase. Anyway, hope that helps. Catch you on the next video. Wrap it out. Bye-bye.